Did you know that when you apply a copy of a black and white image to itself in the heart makes blend mode, you get a threshold effect? For comparison, let me add the threshold adjustment to the left image. And as we can see, the results are exactly the same. The threshold adjustment allows you to change the threshold. So how can we adjust the threshold for our custom method? The solution is pretty simple. We can just add a levels adjustment between the two black and white layers. The black and the white levels will now act as the threshold radius. Pretty cool. We can get the exact same results with the threshold adjustment. So why use a custom method instead of the default adjustment already available in Affinity Photo? Well, one reason could be that the tool you're using doesn't have a threshold adjustment. Later in the video, I'll show another use case which really makes sense to use a manual threshold. The manual method also allows us to add a levels adjustment to the top image. So you do have the feeling of a bit more control on the threshold. However, this is not the case. The default threshold adjustment will get the same results as you can see. Here's a cool trick you might like. We can duplicate the thresholded image and change the blend mode of this duplicate to negation. This will cancel out the threshold. However, when we change the threshold value on the top image, we get this cool outline effect. We can duplicate this layer again, and by playing with the threshold values, we get this kind of cool effect, which could be a good base to create gold or chromatic looks. Pretty awesome. Now let's take a look at the color image. I'll add the default threshold adjustment to the left image as a reference. For the right image, we'll use the same method as with the black and white image. In order to do that, we need to convert the image to black and white. One of the easiest and best ways of doing this is by using a levels adjustment and then changing the mode of the levels adjustment to gray. The levels adjustment will be pretty handy in this case as it will also act as a threshold control. After I add the threshold adjustment to the image as child, I'll duplicate the image layer and apply the hard mix blend mode on the top image to get the threshold effect. As we can see, the end result is exactly the same. As mentioned, the level adjustment we use to convert the image to black and white can now be used for the threshold control. Pretty neat. To give the result of a threshold more detail, we can add noise to the original image. Let's do that by adding the add noise filter to the image on the left. Notice how we get much more detail from the threshold. I call this the poor man's dithering. Now I'll copy the add noise filter and paste it between the two right image layers. As we can see, it does not have the same effect, as the noise is added on the bottom image only. As the layer on top doesn't have any noise, the effect is not so strong as on the left image. However, we can also paste the noise effect on the top image. Let's make sure it becomes a child, so it only applies to the image layer. Now, when we adjust the noise, we get a very similar result as the image on the left. Actually, when we adjust these two noise filters, we get a much better result than the left image. Especially for this, using a custom threshold method is very useful. After some adjustments on the noise filter and the threshold, we get a very nice dithering effect. When I try to replicate this on the left side with the threshold adjustment, I will not be able to get the same level of detail as the right image. You notice the difference especially on the top right area of the image. With the custom threshold we are using and the two noise filters, we just have much more control. Ok, before leaving you, let me share two other methods to create a threshold. Let me reset the left image and clean up the right side so that we only have our colored image. We can create a threshold effect by using the procedural texture filter. I have a preset for this, so I'll use that, but I'll share the formula in the description. The cool part of this method is that you can have the threshold effect apply to a specific channel or even the alpha, which opens up some creative opportunities. 
The final method is a hack that works well most of the time. I can duplicate the image, add an invert adjustment to the duplicate, and set the blend mode of the invert adjustment to hue or color. Now when I change the blend mode of the image itself to hard mix, we get the threshold effect. As mentioned, this is a hack which is not perfect. In some cases, the result will not be perfectly black and white. Let me quickly demonstrate this by removing the image and using a color wheel instead. When I apply the same technique to the color wheels, by duplicating and using the invert trick, notice how we are left with a bit of red in the end result. If you choose to use this method, you could of course fix this by adding a levels adjustment and then cranking up the black level until the color is gone. If I use the same color wheel on the left side with the default threshold adjustment, we get exactly the same result. I'm not 100% sure why you would like to use this method, but it is nice to have this method in your bag of tricks. Hope you liked this video and thanks again for tuning in. Smash the like and subscribe buttons before you leave and I'll see you in the next video.